items from the Antiques Roadshow are absolutely breathtaking. Thousand dollars. Wasn't it fifteen thousand? No. A million pounds. One million dollars. Our first stop takes us to the roots of professional baseball in 1871. The guest great-great-grandmother, a true baseball enthusiast, hosted players from the Cincinnati Red Stockings, who were among the first professionals paid to play baseball. The collection includes rare photographic baseball cards featuring legends like Harry Wright and Albert Spaulding, along with a heartfelt letter expressing gratitude to their host. Player to use a fielding glove. And what did he build from that? An sporting goods empire. This is what the appraiser said about the historical significance. If you're going to insure it, insure it okay. I would insure it for at least one million dollars. Are you serious? <laughs> oh my. The journey of a French regency gilt bronze plateau circa 1820 began as a phoenix rising from the ashes. It came as a gift from friends during a housewarming party. The three-piece plateau, whose initial purpose was to serve as a platform for displaying fruits, found an unconventional purpose as a mirror in the guest's home, crafted in Paris around 1820. The plateau showcased rare craftsmanship, fire gilded with a blend of mercury and gold. These were bronze cast pieces, and the surface was applied by fire gilding. Which Considering the historical and artistic significance. Plateaus are so rare, we would give this an auction estimate of 50 to $70,000. Oh my gosh, John. <laughs> oh my gosh, John. The appraiser states in 1915, Jane Peterson, a luminary in the art world, created the floats, a painting depicting the scenic charm of Gloucester, Massachusetts. Born as Jenny Christine in Elgin, Illinois, Peterson's artistic journey led her to Paris, where she associated with luminaries like Gertrude Stein, Picasso, and Matisse. The painting revealed its true form as gouache, a water-based but opaque paint. With its vibrant post-impressionist style, the personal connection through the owner's great aunt added an extra layer of significance to this masterpiece. So I think if this were to sell in a retail gallery, it might bring as much as 50,000. Oh my word. <laughs> wow. In the annals of sports history, Muhammad Ali's training shoes from the thriller in Manila takes center stage. Acquired directly from Ali's trainer, Angelo Dundee, after the historic 1975 heavyweight championship fight, these shoes carry the weight of a legendary boxing belt. And he threw these shoes in with a note that says, these are the shoes that he wore in Manila. With no documentation but a note from Dundee, the appraiser estimates their auction value at $20,000. Interesting. But 10 years ago. Interesting. Underscoring the significance of provenance in valuing such sports memorabilia. In the mid-80s, a unique piece of cinematic history found its way into the hands of the guest. A breakaway headboard used in Francis Coppola's iconic film, The Godfather, Part Two, was acquired at auction for a mere $25. It's funny, people who saw this, I overheard them here in the room saying, did an animal get to it? Nobody can understand why it was we were talking about this. Right. But the reason we're talking about it is because it's Godfather Two. This piece witnessed the cinematic intensity of a scene where squibs exploded during an attempt on Michael Corleone's life. Intentionally distressed for special effects, the headboard became a rare artifact from the Godfather films. Its scarcity in auctions led the appraiser to estimate its value of $8,000. Oh, cool. All right. Well, thank you. A family heirloom a sampler dating back to 1825 became a link between generations for the current owner. The sampler carried a hidden letter expressing the wishes of Elizabeth to keep it within the family. Despite being damaged by a playful three-year-old, the sampler unveiled its historical richness. With silk on linen, it depicted a house, animals and steps, framed by Elizabeth's brother. The sample is wonderful. It's large, it's very graphic, this house 
with the animals, the steps leading up to the front door. The appraiser, recognizing its value beyond market considerations, suggested a $5,000 insurance value, emphasizing its role as a cherished family archive. The guest's connection to history unfolds through a collection of World War II posters, a gift received during her first year of marriage. Among the 70 posters, four stood out for their artistic merit and significance. Two American posters, signed by renowned artists Jean Carlu and Norman Rockwell, captured the essence of wartime propaganda. Jean Carlu was in fact a French artist working in America during the Second World War. Interesting to note, as a graphic designer, he only had one arm. The appraiser valued the posters at auction for $750, while for the Carlu, $2,000, and for the British poster, $1,500 after recognizing the strong auction records of such wartime artifacts. Hailing from Brunswick, Georgia, the guest unravels their connection to Southern history through a signed first edition of Gone with the Wind. Margaret Mitchell's masterpiece boasts the author's rare signature. She aided signing. So if you see this, this is a rare signature. Acknowledged as a true first edition from May 1936, the book's imperfections, including a missing piece and soiling, add to its allure. Despite these, the appraiser valued it as... Today, you would put an auction estimate of $3,000 to $5,000. Oh, wonderful. That's great. A silver and gold box discovered in a safety deposit box in 2001 unveils a story of craftsmanship and innovation. Identified as the work of Gerald Benny, the box showcases the Benny Bark technique, a textured finish resembling bark. He was hammering a piece of silver out and he didn't notice that his hammer was broken. And he looked down at what he was hammering, it had these wonderful gouge marks in it. With royal warrants attesting to Benny's significance, the box is estimated to fetch $7,000 at auction. Julia Child's impact on culinary arts is immortalized in five copper pans donated to an auction. The guest's mother acquired these pans, which not only adorned Child's own kitchen, but also graced her iconic TV show. These pans weigh quite a bit. They are, it's, it's, it's amazing to think about her carrying these around in her program, and they are really quite heavy. Recognizing the historical significance of these cookware artifacts, the appraiser estimates their auction value of $3,500. Tail price. Wow. So, what do you think these cookware artifacts are worth now? Let us know in the comments. A unique collection of Playboy magazines, once owned by the guest's grandfather, reflects his passion for beauty and photography. The collection includes the first 12 issues, featuring Marilyn Monroe on the debut cover, Boasting contributions from writers like Ray Bradbury and Ian Fleming, these magazines serve as a captivating time capsule from a bygone era. The thing is that Hefner was very enterprising. He worked for Esquire magazine and then decided to start this magazine for men, as he called it, and borrowed $1,000 from his mother to start it and produced the mock-up of this first copy in his kitchen. This historical significance is underscored by an appraisal of three thousand five hundred dollars. Oh my goodness! So, making these vintage Playboy magazines a potential treasure. Gold iridescent glass candlesticks and a bowl found a home in the guest's grandmother's dining room. Crafted by Tiffany Studios, the candlesticks bear Tiffany's signature and can serve as candlesticks or bases for lamps. The bowl, a creation of Austrian company Loetz. What's interesting is that they were shown together as though they were together, but they didn't come out of the same place. Both items are appraised at $1,000 for the Tiffany candlesticks. How exciting! I had no idea! And $1,500 for the Loetz Bowl, connecting generations through elegance and craftsmanship. A garage sale revelation turned into a treasure trove as the guest's mother acquired eight pastel studies by Walter Sherlaw, a prominent American painter. Associated with the Art Students League in New York, Sherlaw's pastel studies were preparatory drawings for Library of Congress murals. The original frame, matter, glass, and labels at back add to their authenticity. What 
I think is particularly interesting about these is that they're framed in the original frames with the original mats, the original glass. Valued at $750 each in the retail market. I love them. I think they're wonderful. These pastel studies whisper the secrets of bygone artistic endeavors. From the heart of a coma, a molded pottery bear speaks volumes about Native American artistry. Purchased in the late 90s, the bear bears the signature of D. Antonio. With graffito decoration depicting an eagle, deer, and a dancer, the bear stands as an intricate piece of cultural heritage. This technique of decoration, it's not painted it's called sgraffito, S-G-R-A-F-F-I-T-O, which literally means to scratch away. Acquired for $800, the appraiser suggests its current market value remains in the same range. What do you think the value will be now? Let us know in the comments. In the realm of artistry, the tale unfolds around the prized possession of the guest, Francoise Gulot's yellow flower painting. This masterpiece is adorned with Gillett's distinctive signature and framed by a gallery label from Dowsel Hatfield. And the prices are beginning to reflect this. In May 2013, there were two works that brought over half a million dollars. The appraiser suggests a retail gallery value of around $20,000. Really? Oh, you're kidding. I only paid one twenty-five. dollars This undergoes the enduring allure of fine art making it a captivating addition to Art Enthusiast Collection. Sorry to interrupt. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks in advance. Now, let's move on to the rest of the video. More paint. This was what the artist Berger Sanzen felt every painting needed there for. His pieces were always full of color, and he made sure his students did the same. The guest attended a summer art session in 1946 and was taught occasionally by Berger himself. He came to the show with a painting that was painted and signed by the artist. Although Berger denied being influenced by the Dutch artist Van Gogh, he was nicknamed the American Van Gogh. And he had a unique style of painting where he left a very thick layer of impasto over the entire surface. I think at auction this might bring as much as thirty to fifty thousand dollars. Oops. Oops. <laughs> a coloured sand in a jar that was the best description the owner of this item could give it. It was indeed a sand in a jar, but not just any sand. It was sand art. This sand art was meticulously done by a highly talented man, Andrew Clemens. He used a big fish hook a great big oversized fish hook and like a popsicle stick. And he would take the sand that he'd collect along the Mississippi River, and then he would pack it in this bottle and manipulate it with the fish hook. Andrew, who was deaf due to a brain deformity, now holds the record for the most expensive sand art sold at auction. The guest great-grandfather was gifted the sand art at the end of the American Civil War by two friends. Its value on the show was, I would guess that it's between four and six thousand dollars is what we'd really? estimate. Years later, it increased massively, valuing between thirty thousand to fifty thousand dollars. The last thing guests on the road show want is to leave the show not knowing what the fate of their item is in terms of value. This man brought in a golf stick, which was claimed to have been made by John Shippen, the first American born professional golf player who played golf at a time when only white people were allowed to play. Though the guest's golf stick had a stamp with Shippen's name, it couldn't be exactly verified as one which was made by him. But based on what I see here, the most likely scenario is that he had to make a club for one of his clients, his golfers, and he put this club together. If the golf stick wasn't made by Shippen, the appraiser noted that it would value between $50 to $75, however, if the owner could provide provenance for the item its value would reach $1,000 to $1,500. He better start digging for that provenance. For over 50 years, no one in this woman's family had been able to fit into these pants. They were among the items in a care package that was gifted to the woman's grandmother. The guest family named the pants Adam and Eve due to the paintings of the biblical figures on it. It was made by the Jeans Manufacturing Company, Wrangler, 
and because it had never been worn, the original tag was still attached to it. The fact that these are so indicative of a period, that things more, in some ways, more collectible. The pants received a value of $400 to $500. Albert Einstein is popularly known worldwide as a physicist, but little did people know that he was also very big on civil rights and racism. The guest's husband was the photographer for a ceremony held in 1946 at Lincoln University to award Einstein with an honorary degree. After the event, the guest's husband sent the pictures which he had taken of the physicist and Einstein's daughter sent back a copy of the picture to him, but this time it was autographed by Einstein. We don't see very many signed photographs by Einstein and ones with this interesting historical resonance. The group of pictures got valued at $7,000 to $9,000. That's wonderful. Yeah, well, yeah. thank you so much. Made to believe that this was a Tiffany pottery, the guest got intrigued by the piece and bought it at auction for $350. Many signs, however, indicated that it was a fake. Tiffany Studios were vastly known for making glass pieces and just a few potteries. The signature and the design of the guest's item, amongst other things, signified that it wasn't an original. Because I think somebody made this from scratch and made it a Tiffany fake piece from scratch. Because of these indications, the appraiser said. Purely for decorative value, perhaps it's worth $25. Determined to end the cycle of deceit, the owner took a commendable decision. And the last person that's going to change it, and I, I will destroy that little emblem on it. This watch was inherited by the guest from his father. He values it so much that he refuses to wear it. The watch was an 18-carat white gold piece made by Gubelin Lucerne, a watch manufacturing company situated in Switzerland. For a watch of this design and age, its value reached 50,000 pounds. <laughs> three generations, this little boy's family has been collecting these stones known as Indian arrowheads. Being a collector himself, the boy collected two out the pieces he brought to the show. Many people in this room started like you do. They, they saw something they were interested in and they pursued it. The smaller, flat-shaped stones were used by Native Americans to serve as an atlatl, a tool used instead of the typical spears or bows and arrows while the big rounder stones were used for working wood and cracking nuts open. These stones had a $150 value. The high value of this furniture makes her unsure about using it any further, but the appraiser said to her, no. <laughs> You should. It was a chest which she had loaned from her boyfriend to store her clothing. The chest was made around 1700 with laburnum veneer, and the form in which the wood appeared on the furniture was called parquetry. Though the leg of the chest had been replaced, the fineness of the piece made it receive a value of. This would cost you between twelve and fifteen thousand pounds. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll use it every day now. A portrait. The mother of this man wore this piece around her neck as jewellery, but it was actually made to serve another purpose. The piece was a scent bottle which was sometimes carried around by women on their chatelaine. It was a 19th century 18, carat yellow gold French piece with paintings of various scenes. So the metalwork is really exquisitely chaste. The owner went from knowing absolutely nothing about the piece to knowing that it's worth. At auction today, that would probably bring around $7,000 to $9,000. Wow, that's great. This episode of the show brought back fond memories to watchers of the TV show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. The guest, who had attended the same college with the show's host, Fred Rogers, came in with a signed and unsigned manuscript, which she used while performing at his senior recital. Frank was greatly admired and awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President George Bush for his contribution to children's education. Oh, Found him yes, to be on absolutely. He was the sweetest man and so kind and so gentle, and yeah. he really was a delightful person. The manuscripts valued at $450 to $650. Fine, that's yeah. great. The grandfather of this woman's husband cherished this pot so much that he hid it in a blanket chest whenever people came to the house. It is the piece truly valuable.
It is a Pennsylvania Dutch coffee pot which dates back to the 19th century. The painting on the piece is referred to as Toll, but the painter remains unknown. A lot of times what we'll see is a diminished surface, losses, flaking, rust coming through. We see almost none of that on here. With a value of... Today's market, we'd be looking at around $7,000 to $9,000 at auction. Me? It was indeed a valuable piece. Phenomenal. Oh, my God. Yeah. Never in a million years would I have thought that. Following a raffle win at a show, this man fell in love with the picture, but so much that he kept adding more. He had won a cow photograph, which was taken by John Stryker, a photographer who developed creative ways of taking photographs of rodeo. The legend is that he had a, a camera strapped to his boot and he would lay down in the arena and take the pictures so the bull looked like it was actually flying. All four pictures had a value of $3,500. He would, after the rodeo, post these on a board and sell the photographs to the cowboys. Carnegie Medal was awarded to people who risked their lives to save others. In 1931, the grandfather of this man received one for rescuing an 18-month, old who had fallen into a 30-feet crumbling well. Uh, they hauled the baby back up safely, squalling all the way, of course. Grandpa said the most scared he was was down at the bottom of that well because it was caving in. The mother of the baby whom he rescued had nominated him for the award, and after a three-year process, he received the medal at a sum of $1,000. Medals are personal items, therefore they are rarely sold. However, the appraiser said. But in thinking about what it might cost to reproduce a medal in bronze today, I would probably insure it for about $4,000. Oh, OK. The mother of these girls did a good job by hiding her lamp away from her rambunctious children. Back in the 60s, the girl's mother came across an advertisement for a lamp. She immediately contacted the seller and bought the lamp for $125. It was made by Tiffany Studios, which was run by Louise Comfort Tiffany. The lamp was known as Rose Helmet Lamp and was made around 1905. The girl's lamp retained its original parts over the years, which made it a rarer item. There's just everything is beautiful about this lamp. Uh, this lamp is worth between $80,000 and $125,000. Congratulations. Oh. Oh. I have to give you guys a hug. Keep watching our videos to catch other marvelous pieces on the Antiques Roadshow.